Hi, welcome to my video comparing the different numbers and looking into the facts and statistics that were given uh, by the CDC. I think this may be below all the different videos that you see on YouTube regarding this uh, global pandemic that we're having. And I just wanted to make a quick video of the information side by side with the numbers and for you to come up with your own conclusions and maybe review the information yourself, I'll give you links to the CDC website below the video for you to compare this information yourself and see if you come up with the same uh, ideas, right? So on the CDC website, according to there, this deaths in the US is this amount, right? Uh, uh, as of this date, right? You compare the CDC numbers of deaths and mortality. This is the website link up here. You have this amount of deaths in total, probably 2019. But look at this number compared to this number. Look at this number compared to this number. Look at this number and compare it to this number, right? I don't know if you're getting the same conclusions. Let's maybe even make it bigger. So we're looking at these numbers side by side. Diabetes compared to this number. Influenza, the flu, compared to this number. Suicides compared to this number. This is... Uh, same organization, same government entity, but like these are the numbers that we're all given. Um, compare this also, this is also CDC, smoking and tobacco use. Uh, compare this to this. Compare this to this. So this is probably also in the US, the United States. So we have this compared to this. Um, I don't know if you're seeing the correlation here. Also, if on this website, uh, I talked about comparing this to this. So another interesting thing I found on this website is if you click on about the data. Um, so this is updated daily, shows the number of jurisdictions. But the interesting thing to look at is that what it talks about, that these counts include confirmed and probable cases. So what this means is that we don't know what percent is confirmed at least the data is not published and then you see over here it says no confirmatory laboratory meeting of vital criteria and epidemiological evidence okay but no confirmatory laboratory evidence meeting presumptive laboratory evidence and either clinical data or meeting vital records data a laboratory performed for COVID, no confirmatory. So what does this mean to me? At least what this means to me, if you look at it, is that we don't know what part of this was lab tested, um, how was it confirmed, whether they used what specific evidence in order to get to this number. We're looking at the total numbers. But even the total numbers, when you compare them side by side, looking at them in context, um, makes you really think about it, right? So fine, uh, we have one source that, that's been given. Now let's look at the global worldwide source that you know we are given. I think this map keeps getting shown all over television everywhere, right? It uh, It's a scary map with like a lot of red dots. It's really... I mean, it's really sad that, you know, this many people on the worldwide scale 
and you see this number over here it looks very eerily similar well it should be at least with the with this here see total deaths and then you click here in the US we have this amount right so a little bit more over here so we have this many deaths here but if you scroll down over here to um, this area Sweden we have this many deaths yes Sweden is 30 times less uh, sized in the US at least 30 times I think it's only about 10 million people um, what my understanding is with Sweden is that businesses were not forced to close and there was no like uh, closing down of the businesses people were just told to use their common sense and take precautions that if they have preconditions to uh, maybe stay home, wear a mask, things like this, but there was no government enforcement and you have this many deaths according to this website. And on this website, who is it by? If you go over here, it says here, John Hopkins, uh, this one, School of Engineering, leading the world, crossing the world. So apparently this guy, Center System Science and Engineering, so John Hopkins puts out this information. So looking at that, what makes it interesting is that if you look over here on event 201, um, if we read into it, the John Hopkins Center for Health Security in partnership with World Economic Forum and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation hosted event 201, a uh, high level of pandemic exercise in October 18 to 2019. So this is months before this pandemic happened in New York, New York. The exercise illustrated areas where public private partnerships would be necessary during a uh, response to a severe pandemic in order to diminish large scale economic and societal consequences. Diminish, well, I think we, we are having a large scale economic and societal consequences with a lot of businesses shut down and uh, people not being able to uh, make money to pay their rent and, you know, feed their families. In recent years, the world has grown a number of epidemic events amounting to about 200 events. These events are increasing and they are disruptive to health economies and society. Managing these events already strains global capacity, even absent of pandemic threat. So they hosted this exercise. Um, I don't know why they removed the photos. Oh, this might be, you know. So they have the event 201. So my understanding is that in this event 201, they actually predicted uh, over 60 million people dying. So, but the interesting thing to note is um, John Hopkins University, and now they're the ones that hosted the exercise um, of over 60 million deaths due to a pandemic and now they're the ones putting out this map but at least the deaths in the US they do correspond to the John Hopkins so it looks like they're using similar sources but going back to the points apples to apples um, I would say you know if you just looked at the numbers this number looks much more scary to me than this. This number looks really scary, much more scary than this. This looks much more scary than this. Um, this is sad too. Looking at this, this looks much scarier. This looks much scarier. This looks much scarier. And then this, 862,000, that, that is also sad. So, I'm looking at the numbers. Uh, these were the numbers that were always given to us um, about, about it. 
making my own rational you know diagnosis of the facts that at least I'm given um, at least these are the numbers that we're told both confirmed and non-confirmed laboratory tested and non-laboratory tested so there's a lot of different ways to confirm this stuff to make this number um, and perhaps a, a lot of different ways to make these numbers but these are you know dead people you could always count that a person is dead and these numbers are at least accurate that we that we know of which is really sad um, so that's that's my video and um, I'm giving links to it and um, you come up to your own conclusions comparing the numbers um, that I have and um, I'm not gonna try to editorialize uh, it is a sad thing you know reviewing uh, this kind of information but when you're exploring it and looking at it in the context um, what did these what did these people know you know you're hosting an event a couple months before that and you're doing a pandemic I also hear that they give, gave out um, little plush toys that look like a coronavirus too but that's hearsay I haven't seen the videos of it um, but I think that might have happened too so what did what did these people know what did these people know and what did this person know who's putting out the information that we're seeing on television all the time uh, with all these uh, different red numbers over here. I mean, how, how do you get this red square? Like, does that mean at least one person in a 300 mile radius got it? Um, you know, going to the US, United Kingdom. So United Kingdom locks down. I think United Kingdom has uh, probably 60 million people. Sweden about 10, um, six times more. Okay, so um, if you multiply 3,000 by six, we got 18,000. Sweden didn't lock down. Um, yeah, and, and these guys, I mean, that's who we're listening to, who's giving the predictions. And then the doctor from England, who used to be called... Uh, Dr. Lockdown is now called Dr. Pants Down because during the lockdown he was having an affair with a married woman or something. Um, looked that up, but he predicted 500,000 in, um, in the United Kingdom um, and 2 million in the US. Um, I mean, maybe he meant that 2 million people will die uh, because of everything. I don't know, but you know that's a little misleading. My understanding is that the, the numbers just don't add up, and the best I could do is look at the information myself and make up my own opinion. If you enjoyed the video, if you want to share it with others, I guess uh, give it a thumbs up. Uh, but I just wanted to make this information and breakdown that I, that I'm looking at myself freely available for people to look at themselves. They could see the websites themselves. Um, I'm not the only one. There's probably millions of people looking at this. And I'm just looking at these numbers and um, seeing is was the response really that rational? Uh, and to say that it was because um, we locked down, if you look at Sweden, uh, it doesn't have a crazy pandemic. And I think there's a couple other countries that didn't lock down either. Um, so I just wish them for the best of people for their health and happiness. Uh, none of these people actually were promoting things like, you know, vitamin C and actually sunshine is good for you because you, uh, boost your immune system by having vitamin D, but these are known for hundreds and thousands of years. And I think the agenda over here with this guy, with these guys together partnered with, um, Bill and Melinda Gates, if you look at the. CDC Foundation website, CDC, uh, Bill Gates, uh, so partners, you see this guy, Immunization Bill and Melinda Gates, so if you look at all the YouTube videos and uh, all these different um, news organizations, CNN and everywhere, they keep uh, coming up with 
um, you know, big sponsors of this foundation. Um, and Bill Gates said specifically in videos, you can have to search with them yourself on YouTube where, uh, nothing is going to be able to go back to work until everybody gets the vaccine, but we're ignoring about boosting up our own immune systems. Um, so we got a director of who, okay. So we got all the, all the people that are telling us about this stuff and telling us that it's a global pandemic, we should panic and be scared and buy up all the toilet paper, uh, in context of this, you know, this is this in context, if you removed this information over here, this would be close to the bottom of the chart. Uh, it would be between diabetes and pneumonia. This would be on this. See, it's broken down by the highest. So it would be like, what, number seven, eight on the list? After stroke. Well, see, chronic respiratory illnesses. You know, people apparently die from a lot of this stuff. Maybe it has to do with this part, with this number. Uh, but th this number also is kind of sad, but apparently this service is an essential service and it continues to be performed even with the lockdown, uh, alcohol is an essential service and, um, tobacco shops are an essential service. Um, but we care about, you know, People, we don't want people to, you know, get, you know, the pandemic on them. Um, so looking at that um, and looking at, at this, and then if you go on the, I think CDC website, if you type in Gates Foundation, um, so it really has a lot. So. There's a lot has to do with vaccinations. If we look at the vaccine, vaccine, no, not there. Uh, let's see, Gates vaccine. How much contribution? And then, and then the question becomes, um, Bill and Millie, uh, blah, blah. So we have that. So looking further in, I've seen a lot of different things. So this guy is all over, all over television telling us that we need to get the vaccine against this, but we are not, you know, worrying about this, about this. And because People aren't getting treatments for a lot of these other things. Let's say heart disease. People are deathly afraid to go to the hospital to get, you know, treatment and diagnosis of this stuff. Perhaps that may contribute to higher level of this, higher level of this, higher level of this. Um, that That's my, you know, you know, belief in that. So... Looking at the different numbers, looking at the connections, paint the connections yourself. Um, I'm trying to be as objective as I can be, but looking at this information in context, it gives me a different view of it. I'm really sad about this stuff happening. Um, but the thing to understand is that within the shutdown economy, um, there's already more people starving than ever. Uh, I think it says United Nations uh, more starving COVID, right? Uh, increased hunger is for hundreds of millions, right? So according to this, that there's going to be hundreds of millions more. A warning that countries with fragile health systems and weak society will have similar effects. So, um, now, now this is really sad. You know, this is sad, but this is really sad too. Um, 
just looking at that, um, So, reviewing the information in the context of this number, this number, these numbers, and then also looking at the global numbers, um, just looking at the world numbers, <sighs> hundreds of millions compared to that. All right, I, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, feel free to download it, share it, or do whatever you want with it. I'm just putting this information out. Um, I hope it helps. And um, yeah, I wish everybody, you know, the best of health. And for us to actually address not just this and perhaps look at the future to have a healthier world than ever, being able to defeat this, but also by raising the health of the world, or at least of you know, at least of the U.S., so that we are stronger against this, that we are stronger against this, that we're stronger against this, and release hidden away treatments, and allow the free information and uh, you know true medical treatments. Uh, you know, homeopathics and whatever other treatments that actually do work and create studies and have a much healthier population in general. Because right now, uh, you know, just, just by taking vitamin C and vitamin D and keeping the people that are susceptible to this stuff away um, I think most people would not die from it compared to maybe from this other stuff too. Um, but this is called the global pandemic. This is the U.S. numbers, 278,000 and 280,000 over here on this website. Um, you know, just like looking at it, 283,000. That's really sad. But then again, right, 283,000, you have in the U.S. this amount. That's just in the U.S., and that was the global number. And where we're told that, you know, it was going to be millions and months later in. I'm happy we did that still, you know, because, you know, it shows that people do care about each other, and we really do. But... I'm thinking that we should definitely address th these things and these things, right? One of the things I actually came across uh, is, uh, I think it's called Electric Rainbow Book, Invisible Rainbow. So the Invisible Rainbow um, in the Invisible Rainbow book, uh, it's the history of electricity and life. I recommend reading it and the connection that they, they pointed to uh, regarding at least this number. Uh, perhaps this guy and this guy. No, please, at least this guy. Uh, is that... Electrical fields do have an effect on the body and that people that have worked with mm, radio signals, such as, for example, Thomas Edison wound up uh, coming down with diabetes. Marconi, who worked on the radio, had nine strokes. Um, and that... There's a lot more information in that book. I'm only a third of the way through. And I think it has a lot of good verified information in it. So I may recommend reading that book too. Uh, re regarding some of this stuff. Because right now is the time to get healthy. Uh, right now is the time to um, 
try to look at all these different ways to, you know, prevent people um, and prevent, you know, hunger. Um, so, yeah, my friends, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you share it. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Maybe thumb it up, uh, put it in social media. I'm also going to give links to um, an alternate website called uh, Brighteon. It's a free speech platform. Apparently, things like that, things like this could get banned off YouTube. Uh, YouTube has banned, for example, these two doctors that you could see on banned that video. Uh, let's see. Banned that video. Uh, let me see. Search doctors. Right, so these guys. So these guys were uh, banned. There's a there's a whole interview. Their their entire interview is on here somewhere. Um, that's important to look at these two doctors. I forget their names, but they talked about this, and it's one of the special reports. There, there's tons of different reports. Uh, regarding the different things that banned that video. So I'm going to give a link to also to Brighteon for this video for you to be able to share from there uh, since this video may get banned. But if we don't put out this information, they can't ban all of us. And either we hang together or we hang separate, you know, as the Founding Fathers said. And uh, thank God they gave us the freedom of speech, the ability to say that. And for platforms such as YouTube to uh, say something is hate speech or misinformation, I mean, um, if these guys are misinformation, I mean, go ahead and ban it. But if this video does get banned or removed or, or anything else, um, I guess this is misinformation, this is misinformation, this is misinformation, this is misinformation. Um, there's there's no threshold with YouTube, you know. Since YouTube does ban videos, perhaps they there should be some sort of change to the thing. So let's say if somebody does get flagged down for, uh, you know, saying that you know they're, they're they they want to do violence or whatever, uh, that's in the video. Remove that video and put in thirty seconds in. The guy says this, right? Uh, have that. On the removal the specific thing that actually happened but then what becomes is that it creates a liability for them I guess and will not allow them to arbitrarily remove um, different videos from the internet so uh, I guess I recommend that and you know Brighteon is good um, Brighteon.com Right now, a lot of uh, speech platforms, even even um, Twitter gets censored. So, but there are free speech platforms such as this one, such as this one are propping up, you know, coming up, which actually promote the videos that do get banned off YouTube. There was one uh, gentleman named David Ike from London Real. Let's see if if this could be found. Uh, London Real. Come on, I don't understand why it doesn't come up right away. But basically, put is that this man David Ike got banned from uh, YouTube uh, with nine hundred thousand subscribers. He's a world-renowned author, and he was talking about the five G situation, this and this. Um. And I was trying to find the reason that it was banned. I watched this three-hour interview done by this gentleman over here from London Real. I think his website is LondonReal.tv. So he wound up launching his own platform in order to continue interviewing this guy. Because in the second interview, YouTube banned his video, which was getting millions of views. And uh, listening to the video in the last 30 minutes of the third part that he did the third interview with him. This guy was talking nothing about but love, you know, love for humanity and doing the right thing. So, uh, 
I mean, guys, this this is what I'm seeing. You make your own conclusions up. You choose to see the way that you're doing it, but the only thing that we're we're actually being shown on TV is people wearing masks, uh, people in ventilators. That you should be scared, be scared, get a vaccine, um, and yeah, you know, there's videos of, of Bill Gates saying that. Um, I think this is in 2010. Uh, there was an interview that no, he was doing. Um, a speech and he was saying that they should lower the population in order to reduce carbon in the world because people use carbon but the interesting thing is that plants apparently breathe carbon and uh, carbon dioxide is what plants breathe in order to make oxygen and that it's like a life cycle gas and that actually makes the planet better but you know, the agenda is to depopulate. Um, if you go on Wikipedia, Bill Gates, right? His father is this guy. You see he's shown hugging children, but he's part of the... Uh, what was it? Planned Parenthood. United Way and Planned Parenthood. So he was on the council of that. Uh, Bill Gates' mom was on the council of IBM. His chief Financial Officer. So interesting how magically he got the contract to provide the IBM machines with his operating system, first MS-DOS, then I guess Windows, and that allowed him to make billions of dollars. I guess it does have help having friends in high places uh, regarding that, uh, family and friends and things like this. So um, we're, we're not, we're not going to lose focus from this. This is very important. So you have that. So you have the whole thing. Um, so it was a TED talk, TED, uh, if you search, uh, Bill Gates, TED talk, lower population. So he talks about innovating to zero, right? The industrial price of electricity, right? CO two. About how bad those twenty six billion tons. But let's let's take a look. Twenty six billion tons. Uh, for each American, it's about twenty tons. Uh, for people in poor countries, it's less than one ton. It's an average about five tons. A little bit of multiplication. So this so is people. Thing on the left, CO2 that you want to get to zero, and that's Why? Really based on the number of people. Oh, interesting. The services. Interesting. Each person's using on average, the energy, on average for each service, and the CO2 being put out uh, per unit of energy. So let's look at each one of these and see how we can get this down to zero. Uh, probably one of these numbers is going to have to get pretty near to zero. Now uh, that's. Back from high school algebra, but let's let's take a look. Uh huh. One of these numbers, right? So, people probably need to use services and all these other things. So, this obviously is highlighted. This is gray. He's talking about high school algebra here, and now, uh, and now he talks about. He also talks about getting vaccinated for everyone. YouTube Bill Gates 
Bill Gates, everyone vaccinated. I don't know what the, what the heck. I don't really care about that. So everyone vaccinated before returning to work. Why is this one? Okay, Bill Gates finding a vaccine for the COVID. Hi, I'm Kristen Bell. Parenting is hard AF. Oh, man. Seriously? This is why everybody should use Adblock. There's a thing called Adblock Plus. For Opera, right? Just add this plus extension. Same search for Chrome. And you'll never see this stuff again. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Come on, I just want to see Bill Gates. Come on, show me Bill Gates. Okay. And to what should have been done. There's something. Nice people as well. So a few things were done. Uh, some countries, even without that preparing in advance, have acted in a way that made sure that uh, very few of their citizens die and they don't have to shut down their economy. Uh, you know, now all the countries that have widespread infection, like the United States, we need to learn from each other about how you not only flatten the numbers, but to get them down. And then, you know, with luck uh, in early June, if the whole country does a better. Luck early June. So we have to assume that's going to be almost 18 months from now. 18 months, we're going to get a vaccine. But I I mean, you and Melinda, first of all, that's why I call you the most generous, and I should include oh, you. Oh, thank you. Too. You're both extremely yeah. generous. Oh. You, you donated $100 million um, to fight this as soon as this started in February. I think you, you donated the, the money. So that $100 million is going to go towards, obviously, trying to find a vaccine, but also the... Interesting. You, you also sponsored this guy, Event 201. Where's the event to one? Right here. Huh. You do So you sponsor an event about a global pandemic. Now you donate 100 million bucks in February. Thanks. It's, nobody's infectious will be very different than what we have today. You may or may not have the audience. I, I would guess you know, uh, the, ebb, the, the strong economy we had will take several years before that comes back. The good thing about the economy is... So also Bill Gates, there's also a tape of him. Bill Gates smiles about bad economy. So there was an interview. So this is probably banned. See, this is a censored platform. You know who owns the thing where where he's actually smiling about it. Oh, this one right here. The economy is not going to be anything like uh, it was. It's going to take a long time to recover. It's going to be, you know, people are going to be surprised at how slow and how, how fitful this is. Let's watch that video one more time, where Bill Gates becomes visibly joyful, excited, almost having an orgasm when Fareed Zarkaria, the other fellow globalist, the Bilderberg Group, on CNN talks about how horrible the economy is and how we better get used to it. Why well, is this going to take a long time to recover? It's going to be, you know, people are going to be surprised at how slow and how, how fitful this is. In the video, Gates gets more excited than Beto O'Rourke did when he learned about the mass shooting at the El Paso Walmart. Why are these guys so happy? Because they know. Anyways, so... You make up your own conclusion. I mean, I, I, I could best show you this, this stuff. Um, oh, returning to normal life. Yeah, this is the return. I love beauty and planet. Oh, Easy. no. Uh, Adblock Plus. Um, probably a good idea to get. Anyways. It's on over here. That's why we're not seeing any stupid ads here. Um, all right, my friends, that, that's my video. I just ranted on and on. 
about trying to get to the points here. Hope you like it. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you share it. Hope you research the information yourself. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Good luck and Godspeed. Bye.